Hello and welcome to the Engineering Career Coach Podcast. In this episode, I will be talking to Luis Duque, a bridge engineer at Foothills Bridge Company and host of the podcast called Engineering Our Future. He's also a member of numerous national committees on leadership, business practices, and international work from the Structural Engineering Institute of ASCE. And he's very active in the ASCE community, that's American Society of Civil Engineers. He serves as a mentor for other young engineers, among other responsibilities. In this episode, we'll be talking about the importance of establishing a creative outlet outside of engineering and how entrepreneurship and volunteering can help you advance in your career. Now, I'm your host, Jeff Perry. I'm the founder of More Than Engineering, and I help engineers with leadership and career coaching to create meaningful careers and lives. And this is the Engineering Career Coach Podcast, the first podcast dedicated to helping engineers and technical professionals with both their personal and professional development. Before we get started, I just want to mention that this is a free show and our sponsors help us to keep it free. So I would now like to recognize our sponsor for this episode, Washington State University. Washington State University's global campus offers a high value online educational experience in engineering and technology management. The ETM program offers a master's degree and graduate certificates in specialty areas like industrial leadership and supply chain management. Courses provide technical professionals with the knowledge, tools, and skills to manage projects, operations, organizations, and people. The program is tailored for professionals who want to advance their careers while still working full-time. ETM faculty and staff are accessible and personable from first contact through graduation. The program is well-recognized and provides courses taught by faculty with industry experience. Live interactive learning provides industry-relevant content, giving students immediately applicable skills. Engineering and Technology Management, an advanced degree for an advanced workforce. Accelerate your career and reach out today. Now it's time to jump right into the main segment of the episode. Today, I'm so excited to be talking with Luis Duque. Luis, so great to be with you today. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I'm excited. Absolutely. So we've talked a few times, but uh, for those who don't know you, um, in your own words, can you please tell our listeners a little bit about you and maybe what it is that you do on a daily basis? Yeah, so my name is Luis Duque. I'm originally from Colombia, moved here to the United States uh, a few years ago to go to college. Now I work as a bridge engineer in Colorado doing like dismantling of bridges and uh, bridge repairs, so like the temporary size uh, of like bridge design which is quite interesting. I just have worked on a variety of projects uh, um, that really challenged my engineering mindset and my engineering um, knowledge, which is always really interesting. I'm also very passionate about just volunteering with the ACE, um, the American Society of Civil Engineers, um, the Structural Engineering Institute of, of ACE and Engineers Without Borders, and a variety of committees uh, with EW. We traveled to Bolivia, we traveled to Puerto Rico, within Colorado as well. So it's a really fulfilling uh, volunteering aspect that I really enjoy and probably will continue to do for many, many years. Um, and in addition to that, I have uh, my own podcast, Engineering Our Future, uh, the blog and the website where we're basically just helping other young engineers or their students uh, succeed in their careers and, and help them become leaders. So a lot of things that take a lot of my time, mostly family in there, uh, love to travel and everything. So um, I'm just excited to share all that knowledge here with you. Well, very good. Well, you've got a lot of things going on, and so we're excited to dive in here just a little bit more. So as an engineer, you, like many engineers, busy person, and, and engineers are doing lots of interesting things, but we also hope that our work life uh, and the things that we just do in our careers don't take over everything in our personal lives. Like you said, you've got family and other responsibilities as well. So what do you think engineers can do to also pursue a creative outlet outside of perhaps their main career? I think one of the main things is just understanding what that's going to be. Is that going to be volunteering? Is that going to be starting a blog? Is that going to be starting a YouTube channel, a podcast, whatever it is, and making sure you are really passionate about that because it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of long nights, a lot of um, um, just long hours working on that pa passion project. And when you really identify what that is going to be like, for me, it was the podcast. I really wanted to share all this content in a way that seemed conversational. I'm sure you probably listen to a lot of podcasts as well. 
it's just very casual. We just bring guests and, and talk about it. Um, and once you identify that, I think you need to look into the systems that are going to support that passion project. Uh, I've talked about this uh, with many people and it, and the amount of time that I spend on the podcast hasn't really increased since I started almost two years ago, but I've just became more efficient. I create a system that support that passion, that support the amount of time I'm putting into it, even if, if the total amount of hours hasn't really increased, the amount of output has slowly increased as those systems uh, become better. So making sure you are both passionate about it, create the systems, as well as uh, just keeping in mind Parkinson's law. Like you have, you, you can feel if you have five hours to write an essay, you're gonna take five hours to write that essay. If you only have one hour, that's the amount of time you're gonna take to write that essay. So as you probably noticed, the more extra, like the more free time you have, the more you feel it with just unnecessary things. So put the, the amount of hours, you set a block of two hours, maybe each evening, and just work intensively in those things for during that time. That has helped me with volunteering, with having family, with having a job. The time kind of shrinks, but the output kind of stays the same as I become more efficient and create those systems that help me uh, do all the things that I do. That's great. So you're recognizing the importance of systems, which maybe we've got some engineers who all, all that they mm -hmm. do professionally is about creating systems or, right. or optimizing processes and things like that. Some people, some people work a lot on that. But you've engaged in volunteering and the podcast and other things personally for, for a number of different reasons. Like, Why do you think it's actually important for engineers to work on creative projects and really work on this creative thinking aspect? Well, I, I think as engineers, we obviously need to be good at math. We obviously need to understand the technical of anything we do, uh, doesn't matter your discipline. But there's always a phase within most projects that we do um, where we brainstorm, we, we are creating ideas, we come with creative solutions to problems. And I think that creative mindset comes into play basically early on on that, on that stage when you have basically a big problem, you have to design a bridge, you have to design a building, uh, whatever it is, whatever your profession is, you need to come up with a creative solution to solve that problem. So I think early on in every project and a lot of times during the project and after the project, we're always thinking about like creative solutions to solve a problem. Once we have that creative solution, then we put the mindset of engineer, we crank the cogs, make sure it actually works and we deliver the product. So it's not like you need to have either a creative mindset of a, or an engineer mindset. You need to combine the two to provide the client with the best product possible. Yeah, it's interesting when you talk about that um, the importance of the creative mindset. And I don't know if any engineers had the same experience I did, where when I was growing up and going through school and things, some of the math and science stuff, it, it was a little bit easier for me naturally. And so I mm -hmm. gravitated towards those things. But I got to where I really relied on the fact that in some of those subjects in school and other things that there was always a right answer. And any of yep. the more creative subjects, writing, art, and, and other things where there was more of a subjective lens to it, like mm -hmm. it was, you know, not always right or wrong that people you were know, bringing in their own personal judgments. I didn't like that. And I even actively started avoiding those things. And, and f looking back in hindsight, I did a lot to suppress a lot of those creative juices. And, mm -hmm. and I wish that I hadn't done that, that I would have worked on cultivating those things along with the, the analytical things that, that I was naturally good at, um, because I recognize now just how important some of those other creative skills could have been for even more success in the engineering field. And so I don't know if you had a similar experience as well, or you've talked to other engineers who have dealt with that. Yeah, I, I think my experience was exactly the same. Like I didn't want to go into the arts because of the um, abstract uh, aspect of it. I wanted to right. find an answer and find the right number at the end of an equation. Uh, but I think once you get in the profession and once you start working in the real world, you start facing the similar challenges. Um, for In my case, I keep going back to structural engineering because since that's what I do. Uh, when you are, let's say, designing uh, a bridge, does it make sense to be a gutter bridge, a suspension bridge, a arch? Like there's different options and it's very subjective to what you want. It doesn't really, 
it's not like a, a an arch bridge would always work in certain scenarios but you need to have that creative mindset to solve a specific challenge that maybe the terrain has or the client uh, the aesthetics all of that stuff comes into play which is where that creative mindset at the beginning of the project is super important and then once you design what type of bridge you're designing and, and building ultimately, then you put that engineering mindset into play and then you find what we love, the right answer, the, the final number in that equation that is gonna give us um, the final product at the end of the day. So it's a combination of both and it's kind of hard to be an engineer and not have a little bit of creativity when you're trying to solve those, those problems. Yeah, absolutely. And so you're talking about kind of that engineering or scientific mindset mm -hmm. and balancing that with creative mindset. How do you think, and, and maybe that scientific side of us is maybe a little bit more natural generally for mm -hmm. engineers, which is part of why we got into engineering, but, but how do you think we relate and connect and combine those two mindsets effectively so we can build both, you know, maybe both sides of the brain if you want to look at, at it that way, or how would you talk about that? I think as, especially for younger engineers, we typically use that engineer scientific mindset a lot when we're starting. Uh, usually we're either given a problem and then we solve it without really having a lot to say in that first brainstorming um, aspect of the project. Um, but also, even when you are thinking about those creative solutions, you need to start thinking, is this really going to work once I put the numbers behind it? Because uh, there is no point of, of designing a beam or, or a structure or something that you know by instinct, but by experience, that is not going to work once you actually get to the numbers behind it. So again, every project I think uses that both the, the creative mindset at the beginning, the scientific mindset at the end. And as young engineers, we obviously are mostly just given a task and say, solve this problem. Uh, but again, the, that scientific mindset, the curiosity, the having an open mind, skepticism and, and humility, it, it needs to be present in everything we do. Um, sometimes engineers are setting their ways and say, this is the only way to do this design, but you give that same problem to someone else is gonna find another five ways to solve the same problem. So keeping an open mind, uh, being skeptical about uh, maybe a way of designing something seems a little iffy. And then once you start designing and actually putting the numbers behind it, you find that doesn't really work. Um, so looking at a more holistic approach, I think is super important for engineers. Absolutely. And, and you brought in another word that I think is really important for engineers is that of humility. Mm -hmm. I think engineers can sometimes have this like, hey, I'm the engineer, I'm the expert, I have all the answers. And when people push on something for one reason or another, they can get pretty defensive about that in some cases. And so just that importance of that humility, having that open mind to different perspectives, whether that's from clients or other stakeholders or from our boss or other peers in our work mm -hmm. or other people so that we can bring all that together. And in the end, recognize that all of us are trying to reach the same goal, create the, the best possible products of high quality or safety, depending on what type of engineering you're a part of uh, so that we can deliver the, the best result. Right. So um, I, I really love that you brought up humility there as you were talking about that and balancing kind of the scientific and, and the creative mindsets as well. Yeah, so, and I think ultimately, uh, just to add something is as engineers, we would like to be right. Like we put a lot of work into a design. Um, it's basically like our baby, the project that we uh, carry from the beginning to the end. So when someone tells us that we're wrong, it's kind of hard to accept that. So we need to be humble. We need to, it's nice to have different perspectives and, and understand where that other person is coming from. Maybe they did find a mistake uh, that have caused a bridge to fall down and we just over overlook something. Um, so just having that humility and, and that open mind to understand that we are humans. We also make mistakes. And that's why a project is never just one engineer working on, on that problem and, and taking it all the way. There's other engineers supporting the team. There are check engineers. Uh, the reviewers. So uh, having that humility, I think is super important for engineers and something we need to practice more, obviously. Absolutely. So Luis, I want to also go back to some of your work and, and time that you spend outside of your, your main role as a structural engineer. Talk about volunteering and entrepreneurship just a little bit. Um, for engineers out there who are considering taking on a side project or getting into volunteering or maybe starting a side business, 
how do you think that can actually help them in, in their careers and, and beyond? I think starting volunteering when I was in college was probably one of the best experiences I, I have ever um, done just because I was able to practice some of the things that I wasn't really being taught in class. Um, I, I, let's say I was part of Engineers Without Borders. We traveled to Bolivia. We were uh, installing PVC pipe chlorinators to purify water, uh, building slow sand centration filters, um, doing all these different structures that are not very common um, in, in a like design in the in United States, but it was challenging my mindset. We was we were uh, writing reports for uh, submittal to EWB National. We were uh, working as a team. We were traveling to a different country. Uh, I was leading this team. Uh, the last year I was part of the group. I was basically practicing all of these different skills that a job that you get after school doesn't really teach you. So. That was kind of one of the things I really enjoyed about that experience as a volunteer. And then obviously that translated into becoming more active after, after I graduated with American Society of Civil Engineers, with SEI, and become more involved with EWB. Um, beyond that, I think the experience of just networking with other people, uh, reaching out to engineers that are maybe 10, 15 years ahead in your career, learning some of their mistakes, learning some of their experience, and applying that to your job is something that you don't really get when you're just sitting at office uh, doing calculations all day. Uh, in terms of like my side business and general future, there's not really like a direct lesson in terms of like technical knowledge, but I think just working by myself, uh, having to be basically my own boss and, and deciding what needs to be done next, what's more important task that needs to happen next so I can keep producing the podcast, keep uh, posting blogs on the website, keep helping students and reaching uh, more young engineers. It, it's something that you don't really get when you are a technical worker starting your career. So it, it, there's always a lot of benefits. It's never really the technical side, like how to design a, a structure or something, but it's those supporting skills that ultimately is going to help you five, 10 years down the road when you get promoted, when you maybe start your own business, when you are doing um, or things beyond just doing calculations. Absolutely. And and I hear, you know, a lot of those soft skills you're building, you talk about networking and mentorship that you're getting from more senior engineers, learning from them and their experiences, which could help you. You never know when those relationships can be mm -hmm. helpful. And then also what I heard is you were leading teams and building those leadership skills yeah. that uh, even if early in your career, you're not a formal leader or manager, that ability to move through projects, either on your own or with a group in a volunteer setting can be hugely helpful when you have those experiences later on down the line and bring those experiences to bear. Like you said, beyond just like being able to run whatever calculations, that's fabulous that you've been able to do some of that and highly, highly recommend looking for those activities and projects and things for, for young engineers, especially, but all of us, no matter where we're at. Right. Yeah. And just something to add to that. I think what you said, it was super important in terms of like networking, like uh, especially with like volunteering in engineering organizations like AC, like I've met a lot of engineers in the area that I have both just enjoyed uh, fun times going out for a drink or for dinner or something, as well as I know there is an open position at a certain company and I know they are looking for a job, then we can network and connect and find them. Uh, that next job uh, we have spent time just putting together events, uh, just growing closer as friends, ultimately as engineers in, in, in Denver, and we are finding opportunities for each other. So I think that's something that comes like a, as a byproduct of everything, volunteering and, and with the podcast, with the guests, I've connected with you through that and with many other engineers. And that's a, a byproduct that it's not quantifiable. You, you cannot really measure the impact you're, you're doing, finding those new connections, but somewhere down the road, you're going to find that you're going to need a electrical engineer, a mechanic engineer, a, another civil engineer to uh, ask, ask a specific problem you're facing during your career. And now you have that network where you can tap into and just reach out without um, spending hundreds of, of thousands of dollars or hours uh, looking on the internet or finding new connections or something you're growing that network to be uh, kind of foolproof uh, down the road in the future. Yeah, you never know where those relationships can can help and, and what you can learn through through those. That's great. So um, we've talked about getting involved in side projects and volunteering. 
Looking a little bit more broadly, like what do you think is the role of engineers today that can really help our society through some of the innovations and creativity, things that we've talked about to solve some of the problems that, that we have here in the world and in our society? I mean, I think engineers in general are just innovators by nature. Like we take a problem that is conceptualized in our brains and put it out and, and build skyscrapers, bridges, basically piece of art that a lot of people use every single day. So uh, we're always in, in that um, field. Uh, beyond that, I think what let's say ASE is doing with future world vision, it's super interesting trying to see how the world is changing in the next 50, 100 years. What is the role of engineers today? What are the, some of the technical, technological tools that we have right now that are gonna help us solve the bigger problems with climate change, with uh, growing population, finding the answers to those like bigger questions that are coming in the next 50, 100 years. So as, as engineers, we play a, an important role in society in terms of helping others live an easier life, I think, um, as well as looking out for the future and making sure that the needs of this population, the needs of these people are met and we are basically uh, vouching for the welfare of the of society. That's awesome. Luis, this has been a fun conversation so far. Just as we kind of wrap up this main segment of this uh, episode, do you have a final piece of advice that you would give to any engineers listening out there? I think the most important part, especially as young engineers, is just like reach out, find other people in your network. Uh, even if you are just starting uh, your first year out of college, uh, go on LinkedIn, connect with new people, uh, go on other social media platforms and, and reach out to other engineers, other professionals, even if they're not directly in the same field. I think that's super important. Again, growing the network and, and seeing, uh, trying to kind of foolproof the future of, of your career, making sure you're meeting new people, uh, creating new concepts and just adding more knowledge. Um, I think the other piece is just volunteering. I think we talked a lot about that here in this episode and, and all these skills, all the knowledge that comes from that. I think that's is super important. And the last thing is actually what something you and I talked a little bit a little while ago is uh, working on planning for the day, uh, learning and keeping track of a lot of these things that happen, especially early in your career. There's a lot of changes happening as you come out of school and trans transition into a full-time job. And the most important part is just reflecting on those lessons, making sure you are uh, taking those notes, sitting down, grab a piece of paper, just write down what you learned today and what you're going to be working on the next day and uh, basically revisit those frequently to just find patterns and also just understand where your career is going, making sure you're making progress and, and ultimately just uh, analyze what, what is happening around you and making sure you're moving towards your goals. Yeah, some great advice there. So at this point, we're going to transition into our Take Action Today segment of the show, where we'll get one more final piece of actionable advice from Luis about how you can upgrade your career. Now it's time for our Take Action Today segment of the show. Luis, we've had a fun conversation today. What's the final piece of advice that you would give to to an engineer who maybe wants to try putting themselves out there, trying something new to accelerate their career, share something they're passionate about? I think the, the best thing to do and something that I failed to do for probably a couple of years after I graduated is to share more of what, what you are doing, share more of like your career as an engineer. Um, obviously you may think that this is not interesting for others, but I personally find it fascinating when I go on YouTube and say like day in the life of a civil engineer, or a mechanic engineer, I think those are super interesting, but something that it's easy, that don't require much effort is just writing a piece of content on LinkedIn or any social media. Uh, if you have a website, I think that's another great way to put it out there. Just write about like, what is, what what's some of the things you're doing at work that are interesting? Uh, where do you see your career going? And maybe something that uh, in terms of like creating uh, a more creative outlet in, in your career would be interesting to see. Uh, if you're really passionate about it, you can create a video, tag us and make sure um, make sure to share it on social media so we can see it and, and we'll just be interested to, to hear all the creative things you're doing. Excellent. That's a great piece of advice. So Luis, thanks so much for a great conversation. You've shared some great things that uh, our engineering listeners can, can take away from today. 
if people want to learn more about you or connect with your podcast or other things, where would you point them to? First way is the website, uh, luisfelipeduque.com. Um, I have the podcast, the blog, and all the information. I have some amazing tools and resources for students and engineers to uh, grab. They're completely free, and I don't uh, charge for most of this stuff. And make sure you follow me on social media and LinkedIn and Twitter. I'm pretty active at Luis Duque PE. Excellent. So we'll have all those links connected in the show notes as well to make sure people can find them if they're looking for them. Thanks again for a great conversation. Wish you uh, nothing but the best as you keep moving forward. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was a, a fun conversation. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Take care. I really hope you enjoyed the episode today. We would love to hear your feedback, comments, and questions. You can go to www.engineeringmanagementinstitute.org where you'll find a summary of the key points discussed in the episode, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books that we mentioned. And don't forget to check out any upcoming live webinars also at engineeringmanagementinstitute.org. Additionally, for any engineers who are struggling and need help taking the next career step, I've created some free training resources with an opportunity to join a more intensive program called the Engineering Career Accelerator. You can find more information at engineeringcareeraccelerator.com. Until next time, I wish you the best in all of your engineering endeavors.